Great day everyone, this is Jason Santos and for today we will be discussing environmental economics and this is going to be the introduction to this lecture. So let's get started. So first we have to understand the reasons why we are studying environmental economics. There are plenty of reasons to be quite honest. But here in this very first lecture, this introduction, we would understand uh, a few things uh, concerning things about environmental economics. So first, we have to understand that there are dangers in free market. Okay? Left to its own devices, a free market economy will not deliver the level of environmental quality that people want. Firms can pollute, consumers can make choices without concerns for the environmental consequences, and this is why we need government regulations and interventions. So, we all know and we have seen not just uh, on TV, on news, but personally, wherever we go, we see a lot of waste, we see pollution. Um, here in the Philippines, Pasig River, Manila Bay, Marilao River, they are all polluted, okay? And this poses a lot of health problems issues within the area okay in the same manner in lagos nigeria the water pollution has caused them a gap of 407 million gallons worth of water deficit and this again is brought upon by issues surrounding uh, environmental pollution and um, without sufficient monitoring and um, without government intervention this problem is just going to balloon up so this is the reason why we have to understand environmental economics number two is that environmental economics could serve as an intervention okay. environmental economics is necessary intervention in the workings of the economy it answers how much environmental quality do we want and what is the best way to get it. So right now, there are a lot of laws, acts, and uh, initiatives in ensuring that the environment is kept safe. In the other countries, there are many laws as well as in the Philippines. And here are some of them. The Presidential Decree. 1586, the Philippine Environmental Impact Statement System, the Clean Air Act, the Clean Water Act, Philippine Toxic Substances and Hazardous and Nuclear Waste Act, uh, Philippine Ecological Solid Waste Management Act, Climate Change Act, Environmental Awareness and Education Act, and Fisheries Code of 1998 Act are some of the laws existing right now to instigate the intervention in the safety and the well-being of our environment. Number three is environmental trade-offs. So as economic students, I'm sure all of you are familiar with the concept of trade-off. Environmental economics serves as a framework for thinking about the fundamental choices, the trade-offs, the advantages and disadvantages, in the environmental policies. So when we talk of trade-off, we, we are already aware that regardless of our intention, which is to produce something positive or to drive positive um, results, okay, one way or another, it would still result or incur negative actions or neg negative results, such as the issue in... Um, Indonesia, okay? The palm oil giant IOI is still involved in deforestation and draining of rainforests, this time through the third party suppliers and their continued drainage of peatlands linked them to devastating fires. So, see, um, these uh, deforestations, okay, have caused a lot of uh, fires, okay? issues, drainage issues in Indonesia. And that is uh, one of the trade-offs 
in the side of um, their environmental initiatives. Okay. Environmental costs and benefits must be considered when thinking of environmental protection. So, for example, eliminating pollution is unlikely and entirely uh, impossible or not feasible. And that would translate to zero production, which will result to welfare issues, okay? So, you want to eliminate pollution, then you must have no production. Having zero production is impossible as well because um, we are consumers. People are consuming all of the time. So, where does that leave us if no one is going to produce, okay? Economists have argued that it is not efficient to reduce pollution to zero, Therefore, we must meet the balance, okay? Maintain production, but minimize the environmental costs, okay? Uh, promote much more benefits or weigh on the side of the benefits. Number five, cost of environmental protection. And the International Energy Agency today put a figure on the amount it will cost to go green. And it's a lot. It is actually around... 45 trillion dollars that's just an estimate even when you spread that amount over the next 42 years it's still more than 1 trillion annually or more than gdp of many industrialized nations so wanting to protect the environment comes at no cheap cost okay we really have to spend spend a lot and sometimes the problem is in the budget Okay. You wanted to help the environment, but there's no budget. There's no sufficient budget for it. Okay. Um, like for example, there's a movement right now to use green cars, which means uh, it's not using fuels and it is electrically charged. However, uh, as much as we would like to start or revolutionize the use of um green cars okay electronic cars egypts here in uh, the philippines okay it would require a certain mineral okay to um create that type of battery okay and that is what you call the cobalt cobalt is being mined continuously in the republic of congo in order to produce these green cars or so-called electronic cars okay so the cost of creating those cars is the toxicity of the republic of congo because they are mining this cobalt and this becomes um it goes upstream or it um pollutes their waterways pollutes their habitats okay they really wanted to support us and it is a means of living for them but at the end of the day it um, kills and actually harms a lot of people in Congo because of the production or youth um, harnessing of that mineral called cobalt okay number six market mechanisms market mechanisms or in regular terms we call that incentives uh, incentives are used to discourage pollution and are more flexible and achievable at lowering the cost for examples uh, many companies are actually going green or have started to utilize um, green technology among the subsidies that are used at all levels of government to help manage environmental pollution are grants low interest loans, favorable tax treatment, preferential procurement policies, and uh, those um, benefits actually uh, motivate these companies to go all on uh, going green, okay? Number seven is uh, emissions trading. Emissions trading is a market-based approach to controlling pollution by providing economic incentives for reducing the emission of pollutants. The concept is also known as cap and trade or CAT or emission trade schemes or ETS. 
So how this works is that um, one com- uh, there is actually an allowance of uh, emissions globally, okay? Or there is a target threshold for emissions globally. And each company is given a certain cap, okay? Now, if a uh, company A is not able to use all or fully utilize the emissions it produces, it gains incentives and it can actually sell its remaining allocation to those companies who are heavy in emissions. See? So, uh, at the national level, okay, it already exists in European Union, in Switzerland, New Zealand, Australia, South Korea, Kazakhstan, uh, US, Canada, Japan, and many progressive countries. In early 2020, the Committee on Climate Change of Philippine House of Representatives conditionally approved the Low Carbon Economy Act, number uh, 2184, which includes provision for a domestic cap and trade system. So we are already starting to adopt this kind of system to reduce emissions globally or help it, or reduce emissions globally. Number eight is social value. We must look at environmental economics in terms of values, understanding of themselves, appreciation of others, responsibilities of citizenship in a free society, sensitivity to private and public value issues, intellectual honesty, concern for all religious and ethical issues. Of course, another thing that we would have to consider is the value system of people. You know, we are all um, possessing different types of culture, religious beliefs, perspectives in terms of um, environmental policies. And we can't just, you know, put a one-size-fits-all solution, but rather consider the different values or perspectives of different people, okay? Number nine, climate change. Tackling climate change will need coordinated international efforts and actions. Individual countries acting alone will have very minimal impact to this global problem. The only serious way we can make an impact is by making this movement an international deal. So the climate change problem has been here for quite some time. Um, it has been uh, made uh, prevalent since uh, the 1990s. Okay. And companies have already made um, switches. Government has taken, again, initiatives in order to address this climate change. Okay. Number 10 is that environmental economics requires major changes. The discipline of economics arguably should play a central role in meeting the challenge. The core question at the heart of sustainable environmental economic changes is how to allocate the finite resources of the planet to meet the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. A central focus of economics is how to allocate scarce resources to meet desired goals. Indeed, a standard definition of economics is the study of allocation under scarcity. So, it requires a lot of change, major change, and as mentioned in uh, earlier slides, uh, it is very costly, okay? And, in fact, if we are going to talk about the space race, okay, one of the drivers for space race, apart from war and um, mining, okay, is actually um, the search for additional resources. Okay. Many um, scientists and economists have projected um, critical resources level at around the year of 2050. And by that time, the population would have grown so large that there's not enough resources in the world to cover the needs of people daily. And that is why we are continuously going in space, okay? Checking for water, 
sources, land sources, energy sources, and many more. And with that, I hope you have learned something from this very first discussion of environmental economics. And um, if you have questions, feel free to send me a message. Thank you so much and I will see you on our next lecture.